Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about multi-control net within ConfUI. I know that many of you um, find Automatic 11.11 more user-friendly and I do as well, but with ConfUI we actually have more control over the generated image, so sometimes it can be more useful to use that if you want to achieve better results or more professional results. So that's why today I'm going to use that for changing a style from a realistic style to a, an anime style, and I'm also going to show you a little trick for removing the background using ControlNet. Let's have a look at it. So this is the workflow I would like to show you today. It doesn't consist of many nodes, it's actually showing you just how to use ControlNet really. I'm going to share my workflow. If you don't have some nodes, you can download them. It's going to be super easy if you have ConfUI Manager, which you can find in this GitHub page here, and you can install it following this simple installation process. So you will have to go into your ConfUI folder then ConfUI and then custom notes. And then here you can type CMD for opening the common window. And then you just need to git clone. So you just need to copy this second line here. Paste it in here like this. And then you need to press enter. After that, you need to restore it ConfUI. And you should be able to see this manager button in here. So if you click that, you can then click on install missing custom notes. And here you will have a list of, of notes you don't actually have. If you're not able to install some of them through this process, you can still go into manager and then you go into ConfUI notes info. And then you search for the name of the box I use. So for example, in this case, I have CR multi-control net stack. So you can go here and you type CR control net stack. Actually, it's multi control net stack. And here you have the reference, the title, and all of the information, the description for downloading them. You just need to press on this reference, which will open the GitHub page. And then you need to, if you scroll down, you will just need to git clone again the URL of this page. If you don't have ConfUI Manager and you don't want to install it, you can Google the name of the of the box I've used and, and then you can find the GitHub page and install it again using the common window. For this tutorial, I'm going to use one of the images from Pexels. For who doesn't know, it's a website where you can find free images and free videos. So it's quite useful when you are testing or trying different things with Stable Diffusion. And I actually use this picture here. Then just to be more precise, the packages I use for building this workflow are more or less this one you can see here in my folder. The most important, I would say, are ConfUI Configural Custom Notes, from which I got the CR Multi Control Net Stack, DW Post for the Control Net Preprocessor for Open Post. Uh, it's a little bit more efficient than the you know the basic open post preprocessor so i've i've used this one i've also have this efficiency notes confui for now i just use the efficient loader and the case sampler but it's usually very useful for the high resolution fits for the xy plot and it works also with animate diff which is which makes the difference and then for having everything a little bit more organized i have also this package was not sweet confui which has different, actually different features, but the, the most important I use them is to have the straight lines between each node. The control net models I'm going to use are exactly the same. I downloaded for Stable Diffusion 1.5 for Automatic 11.11, and you can find them on a game face. So now let's have a look on how I built this workflow. The first node is the load image. So in here, you just need to upload or drag and drop the image you want to use for your control net model. And then given I'm uploading an image, an actual image, a realistic picture, I need a preprocessor for generating a, a mask from this image so that the diffusion model can use that mask for generating the image. You know, there are a lot of masks you can generate and each of them allows you to generate a different picture based on different characteristics of the input image. So sometimes you want to use 
only one type of preprocessor, only one type of control net model. At the time, you may want to use more control net models altogether for controlling the depth of the image, the color of the image, or the shape of a person of an object. And what I want to do now is to generate a lot of masks in order to analyze them closely and understand which one I want to use, if I want to use one of them, two of them, three of them, or none of them. So in order to do that, in this control net preprocessor, I have included all the preprocessors for different control net models. So I have the preprocessor for realistic line art, Kenny, soft head, scribble, normal map, depth, and open post. And then to each of them, I have attached a preview image so that I can see the mask created through this preprocessor. So I think this is a good starting point for understanding which type of control net we want to use. Oh, I also have tile here. So what do I want to achieve? Actually, I would like to transform this picture into an anime picture, right? So if I look at this control net, I'm pretty much sure I'm not going to use this tile one because otherwise it will stick too much to the realistic original realistic picture. I don't think I'm going to use Scribble either and probably I'm not going to use Kenny or maybe yes, I don't know. <laughs> so let's have a look at it. So what I did, I have added the CR multi control net stack and with this we can actually control which control net model we are going to use. So let me bring this back to default, which will be like this. Let's remove this and this for a second. And let's assume that we want to use line art. So what you have to do, you simply need to connect the line art preprocessor to image one in this CR multi-control net stack. Let's zoom in a little bit. We need to switch these two on and we need to choose the line art model. Again, I downloaded this from the Hugging Face website and then I moved them inside here. So ConfuI models, control net, and I have my models in here. And then this is the control net strength, which corresponds to control net weight in automatic 11.11. So how much weight we want to give to this control net. One means that you are giving the full weight. So if you look at this mask, probably the output image is going to have the, these exact details, which probably we don't want because we want the final image to change a little bit compared to the re realistic input image, right? So maybe we want to reduce the weight of this, of this model. 0.7. So like that, we are using only line art. It doesn't matter that we have all of these masks here. These are just as a reference for us to understand what we want. In order to use them, you will need to connect the preprocessor to this multi-control net stack. Let's assume that we want to use open pose as well. I have open pose down here, so I need to zoom out. I grab this here and then like this I'll connect it to image 2 and then if we want to act actually activate it we need to switch the second one on choose the open pose model and change the strength if you want to I'm not gonna change it I'm gonna leave it like one so full weight on open pose and 0 0.7 on line art then let's see where this is connected to this is connected to my efficient loader. So from control net stack to control net stack, this is pretty easy. Then in here, you need to choose the, the main settings. You have the checkpoint name. I'm using Cardus Anime from CVT AI is this one. I'm going to use this variation allowed encoder. You can use whichever you want to, which I downloaded from Hugging Face as well. I'm going to use clip skip actually equal to minus two. I'm not gonna use a LoRa model, so I'm not gonna change this to anything. I'm gonna choose my my prompt, which is coherent with this uh, Cardus anime 
So if you look at the at the generation they don't see with AI, you will you will see which are the best settings for uh, for this model. So that's what I used. The same for the negative prompt, and then I left the other settings as they are. The only change I made, I have included this CR aspect ratio. This is not needed. It's just for having an automatic aspect ratio. So I chose the 5 and 12 by 768, and I connected the, the first two integer to this empty laden width and height. So make sure that width is connected to the width, which is the first one. And then the height is connected to the height. So it's, it's going to be the second one. So this one. Again, this is not needed because when you will have the efficient loader, you will have actually the width and the height here. Let me see if I can show you an example of that. Yeah, you can, yeah, you can see that in here you, you have width and height included in the efficient loader. So it's really up to you. And then I'm connecting this efficient loader to the key sampler. So the model to the model, the positive condition into the positive, negative condition into negative, latent image to latent image, the variational of the encoder to the optional variational of the encoder. And that's it. Now on this case sampler, what can we do? So we can decide our seed. I'm going to use a random seed, minus one. Let's zoom in a little bit. You can decide how many sampling steps to use. I'm using 20. The CFG scale, seven. You have the sampler, DPM, PP, Karas. You have the, the noise. And I think that these are the most important ones. And then you also have the preview of the image you are going to generate. So given you have the preview, but you are not saving it, uh, I have included the save image in here. And then just to compare the initial image to the final results, I've just included this load image here with the image I uploaded before. Okay, cool. This is most of it. So once we are ready with all of our settings, we can just press on Q prompt. And this is my result now using, again, line art with 0 0.7 and open pose. Now let's have a look to our output. So it seems pretty good, but I'm noticing something weird. I can see a person here and I really don't want that person, but why am I seeing that person? Like I would assume it's from line art, right? Because it's very, very detailed. So if you look at the mask, there is actually something here, but I'm not sure how the model can tell that this is actually a person really, uh, even because we are using a not a full weight, we're using 0 0.7. So I would assume it's from open pose then. Let's have a look at the open pose mask. And we can indeed see that the, the preprocessor here is detecting someone here on the left side. So there are two options for avoiding having this person in background and in general to have a different background. We can use depth, which is this one, right? However, if we use open pose and depth together, we'll probably end up with the same issue, right? Because you're still using this mask, which includes this person in background. So, or you don't use open pose, or you reduce the weight of open pose, or we can use the depth map in another way. Let's have a look how. It's quite useful when you want to use the depth map in combination with also liner, for example, and you want to remove the background. Let me zoom out and you will see I have here a remove background section. I have a convert image to mask and an in-paint preprocessor initially, just to show you like what I want to achieve, right? Which is this one where you have the person masked in front based on the depth mask. But we don't want this, right? We want the opposite, the inversion of that. So we would like the mask to be applied on the person, not on the background. So we can invert the mask using invert mask. Again, using the in-paint preprocessor. And then we'll get the opposite of what we had before. So we are masking the person and not the background. Then on this picture, this new picture, we can use the DW preprocessor, so the preprocessor for the open pose, and we'll get a new open pose mask, which is this one. 
then instead of connecting our previous open pose mask which was including the person in background we can connect this mask to our control net stack so let's zoom out again i'm going to drag this in here image two make sure that the model is linked to the exact number so in this case is image two because i have open pose in control net two if it was one i should have put it in the one so now based on this new mask here i'm going to cue the prompt again and we can see that the new image we are getting doesn't have anyone on in the background and i actually have a three because this is what i described in my prom prompt description i have trees in background quite cool isn't it this is how you transform your images in this case i'm using just through control nets but feel free to use how many you want in this control net stack you have only three image you can images you can link but what you can do you can clone this control net stack and you can connect it like this so you can connect the two of them and then you connect the last one to the efficient loader and in this case you can add so three plus other three so they are six control nets overall so using more than one control net is usually very useful, mainly when you want to create a video, not just an image. Then for creating videos now, we have more advanced technique, uh, for example, animate diff or uh, warp fusion, uh, super good for generating uh, uh, more stable videos with not much the flickering. But if you want to generate a very simple video, a quick one, you can simply use image to image using different control net models for generating the image and then maybe applying the flickering using DaVinci or Adobe. So yeah, that's it for today. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for watching and see you at the next video. Bye.